Today we're talking about diarrhea. And this video is a somewhat an exception to the rule because most videos that I create are about symptoms that I personally had myself and fixed myself and no longer have. This is actually an exception to this rule because I never really struggled with diarrhea as a, as a problem personally. I find most people either have constipation or diarrhea. There's an unlucky few that have both, so sorry if that's you, that kind of sucks. But you'll be happy to know there's a constipation video coming very soon as well. So this isn't something I've really struggled with, but I work with many people that have, and this is something that's been coming up a lot recently. So I wanna make sure that I walk you through this process of understanding what, like, why this is happening and what we can do to actually fix it. So as you can see, we've got a very in-depth board today. We're gonna to be, there's a lot of systematic process in this. So it's very step-by-step step, and I'm gonna walk you through that step-by-step step process. So today is a live video. So I'm just gonna open this, this live video up to see if I have any questions. So as I'm, as I'm going through this, I absolutely encourage you to leave me your questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them. I, I love it. I'm going to answer them towards the end, but please do leave me your questions. Let me know if you're comfortable sharing. Is this something that you struggle with? Do you have constipation? Do you have diarrhea? Where do you, where do you land on this spectrum? So, so diarrhea, let's talk about it. So I will always ask, anytime the body is presenting with a symptom, I'll always ask this one question, okay? You can do this for any symptom that appears in your body, you're on the right track. You're gonna find healing eventually. So the question is, why is this intelligent? Why is this symptom the most intelligent thing the body can be doing right now? Why is this an intelligent or adaptive response to the environment that I'm currently in? You ask this question for any symptom, diarrhea or anything else in between, you will find a solution. So ask the question, why is this intelligent? So what's happening here is we have a cleaning and cleansing process that is occurring inside the digestive system. So this tells us that they're boiling it down to its most basic essence. There's something in the digestive system that the body doesn't want in the digestive system. So it tries to get it out. Most like mainstream approach to this would basically just be to try to stop the diarrhea. And that is a really bad idea, especially if you're gonna do this with medication, because then you're going against your body's adaptive response. So your body is doing everything it can to keep you as healthy as possible in the environment that you're currently in. And if you fight against your body's adaptive response, you're basically making yourself sicker. So if you wanna to move towards health, you just have to keep this in the back of your mind. Why is this an adaptive response? And how can I help my body instead of fighting against it? You wanna work with it, because your body knows how to be healthy automatically. It's sort of like by default. And that's why being, being ill is kind of, kind of really awful, because you're not really at default anymore, you're below it. So we have to ask the question, why is this adaptive? And what is it trying to do? So we do not want to suppress this kind of reaction with medication. There are some exceptions to this rule. There are a very few exceptions. I would say the only time I would encourage you to use some kind, so first of all, not a doctor, this isn't medical advice, don't misconstrue it as that. But I would say the only real exceptions to this rule are if you are in a life or death situation where you're basically dehydrating because your stools are, you're just losing all of your water through your bowels. So that's basically the only situation that I would suppress diarrhea with the medication. Because as I've said, it's cleaning and cleansing something. There's something in your gut that it's trying to get out. And if you stop your body from doing this, you might stop the diarrhea temporarily, but I absolutely guarantee you the consequences of doing that will be far worse than just having diarrhea. You'll either develop some kind of autoimmune problem, you'll develop a severe chronic gut infection, you'll develop um, something something worse. You know, it'll become, instead of it being an acute problem, it becomes a chronic problem. So that's, is really bad. Your body's cleaning itself. It's a normal reaction. This happens to people when they get food poisoning. This happens when people get, when they eat something bad. It's because the body's trying to move it out. So we have to ask the question, if the body's, if this is the body's cleaning and cleansing reaction, we have to ask, what is it trying to clean and cleanse? What is in the digestive system that it doesn't like? And, and maybe like, say this is like a food that you're sensitive to or a food that you don't have the ability to digest. Maybe we should remove that from your diet, you know? And then your body doesn't have to do this adaptive response. So this leads us, this leads us down here. What do we do? So first we move inflammatory foods. So this is the first step because it's, it's pretty easy. You can immediately just remove things from your diet that are irritating your gut. So I am not a big fan of restrictive diets. I, I know that in, even in alternative, I would say actually mostly in alternative medicine, the focus on food as medicine can go into sort of orthorexia or an ARFID type expression very, very easily. And it's kind of hard to, 
to find that balance in, in finding the, the fine line in the middle of what healthy eating actually is. But I would say, looking at this in, in this context, remove inflammatory food, to me, this would mean anything that your body doesn't have the ability to break down, digest, and absorb is inflammatory. So this looks different for everybody. If you can eat gluten and digest it and have no problems with it, like I can right now, then fantastic, you can eat gluten and it's fine and it's not gonna cause diarrhea and it's actually healthful for you. However, if you don't have the ability to digest it and it causes an inflammatory process, that is not a healthy food for you. But then we can look at something else. So we could look at rice, maybe, for example. Rice is a really good example because it's way less inf inflammatory, potentially way less inflammatory than gluten-containing grains. But if you've lost the ability to digest all carbohydrates, especially the, the starch-based carbohydrates, this is still going to cause an inflammatory reaction. And if your body cannot digest this, it's going to cause diarrhea. So this goes for anything. This can be for even, even healthier foods. This can be for certain types of animal products. There might be an animal product your body just cannot digest. And in that case, it will give you diarrhea. And that doesn't necessarily mean the food itself is bad. It just means you don't have the ability to digest it right now. So don't eat it. You know, the whole reason that you eat food is to nourish yourself and to build your body. And if you're eating food that isn't helping you, that isn't making you stronger, it's making you weaker. And your body is telling you that by giving you diarrhea as a symptom. So we have to look through your diet and to discover what is what your body isn't digesting very well and remove it. So some common, some common things here that I would look for would be some people lose the ability to digest starch, especially when the gut is damaged. So you might find just removing all starches from your diet can provide some good symptomatic relief. Um, Fiber is really irritating, you know, literally by definition. So if you literally like go on Google and type like the definition of fiber, fiber is carbohydrates that are indigestible. So imagine what happens if you're eating food that you can't digest. Obviously it's irritating, right? And the whole point we're talking about here is the food that is most inflammatory is the food you can't digest. And there's not a single person on earth that can digest fiber. Nobody has this machinery themselves. It's the it's the microflora and it's the inhabitants of the gut that do this. So if you're having diarrhea, you probably have an imbalance there. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this down here. We've got probiotics there, we've got inflammatory things. So we're gonna talk about probiotics. But for now, like fiber's probably really irritating. So first of all, let's re remove the, the types of fiber that are really harsh and aggressive. So this would be like anything that's raw, especially stuff that's more fibrous. So think about like kale, raw kale, for example, that's really harsh. Look at things like nuts and seeds. These are even worse because not only do they have very potent, but very like strong, harsh, aggressive, uh, abrasive fibers, they also have a lot of anti-nutrients. So these are not only, not only these substances not digestible, they actually stop you being able to digest the other food you eat that is digestible. So if you eat anti-nutrients like phytates, like phytic acid, this will, first of all, it, will, it damages your gut lining. It, it, it steals enzymes from your gut lining, which, which can cause damage if you don't have enough. But it also binds to minerals in the food that you're eating. So things like magnesium and potassium and other types of vitamins and things like that. And it binds to them and strips them out of your, out of your body and you don't absorb those foods. So removing foods that are very hard to digest, that have very low bioavailability, can be really helpful because then you're able to absorb the nutrients that you are eating and you're not causing this inflammatory reaction. So if this, if you wanna try something like this, I would point you towards the GAPS diet. So I, I really like Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. I also kind of hate her a little bit as well because what she's done with the GAPS diet is she's basically created a brand around an ancestral diet because the GAPS diet is basically what almost all of humanity would have eaten like just after the ice age it basically was a gaps diet so what dr natasha's done here is she's very cheeky and she has basically put a brand on the basics of a human diet so this is a really good place to start if you don't know if you don't know where you are or you feel a bit lost because first of all it's established she's got two really juicy sized books if you've got more of a a, a mental health problem or a, like autis autism or sensory processing disorders get the yellow book, that's gut and psychology syndrome. But if you have more of the physical symptoms, this is like diarrhea, um, chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal fatigue, autoimmune problems, get the blue one. This is gut and physiology syndrome. Either book's gonna work fine, but they're just a little bit more niche specific. So that she talks a little bit more about mental health in the first one, the yellow one, and she talks a little bit more about the physiology, so physical 
illness in the second one. Either, if you've got any of the problems, either of them are gonna help. They're still, the they're still the same diet, they're just a little bit more specific on different types of issues. So this is a really good place to start. But you, you have to play it by ear. Like just because GAPS says it's okay, doesn't mean that it's actually okay. So you're gonna know, if this is a food-based thing, you're gonna know if you've fixed this problem because you're now eating food, you're digesting it well, and you don't have diarrhea anymore. It's a, it, this is one, one reason that I don't, I don't use a lot of testing in my one-to-one -one work is if you're doing the right things, the symptoms change and it's fairly obvious. So if this really is an inflammatory food problem and that's what's causing the diarrhea, you change the diet, you remove the things you can't digest and absorb and that are extra inflammatory and the diarrhea just stops all by itself. So this isn't a long-term solution because staying on a restricted diet long-term isn't a long-term game plan. But sometimes, and this is one of the big premises of the GAPS diet, is if you've removed the food you can't digest for long enough and you're giving your body what it needs so that it can start building its ability to digest foods again, you can then add foods back in and then digest them and absorb them. So you're breaking that cycle. The, the GAPS diet is based on another book called Breaking the Vicious Cycle. It's very much about that. So that's the first step, remove inflammatory foods. Second step, so this one's really interesting because, so this is, this is things that you're putting into your mouth and obviously you put it into your mouth, you eat it, it goes into your digestive system. The thing is, there are, there are bugs, there are organisms that live inside your gut and they can be producing things inside you that can your body doesn't really want. So if you've got an imbalanced gut flora, you might be producing toxins in your own digestive system. And then your body sees these to toxins and it triggers diarrhea because it's trying to flush these toxins out because if you absorb them, you will get really sick. So you can see why suppressing that would be a really bad idea. So then in this case, we have to look at what are these toxins, where are they coming from? What are the flora that's imbalanced and, and how can we rebalance them? So this is removing inflammatory toxins and bugs. So I, I, I say this first, we're gonna recover inflammatory toxins first because there's a lot of things that can be happening in your environment that aren't food related that can be putting toxicity in your gut that can trigger diarrhea. So if you've got amalgam fillings in your teeth, for example, in your, if you've had, um, like filling. So if you had a root canal and you've got a, um, an, an abscess or some untreated dental work, that can be leaching toxicity into your digestive system all of the time. If you've got, if you're living in a house that's water damaged and you're breathing in mold and mycotoxins, you're going to be, these things are going to be going into your lungs, they're going to be coming into your mouth. You're basically going to be swallowing them, they're going to be coming into the gut all the time. So you have to look at these things first that are outside of you. But then we have to go inside and realize that your gut can be producing things that are making you not feel very well as well. So in this case, we would be looking at, so first of all, we've got mold, we've got metal, and we've got endotoxins. So mold is what I said, metals is in the teeth, and endotoxins, these are a type of toxin that are produced in your own digestive system. So they're called endotoxins. Endo means from within. So endotoxin means toxin that is being formed uh, within. So this, and you can also have parasites as well. So parasites can be producing some nasty stuff for you in your digestive system that your body could be trying to, could be trying to, to basically get rid of. So in this case, the biggest problem is if it's, if it's, uh, it's toxin-based, if it's inflammatory molecules in your environment, change the environment. So if you're living in a moldy house, stop living in a moldy house. If you have toxic metals in your teeth, get those toxic metals removed. I know I say this kind of flippantly and sarcastically, because it sounds so obvious to say, but it's often so difficult to do in practicality. And I'm not saying you have to go and move house tomorrow. I'm not saying you have to go and get your teeth fixed in a week. What I'm saying is you have to acknowledge that these are the root cause of the problems and you have to start planning now for those, for those eventual outcomes. I was in a, mo a water damaged building for years before I was able to move out of it, but I still had a plan set. I didn't know how I was gonna make it work, but I set my intention and that's the first step, you know? If you're, if you, when, when you, when you, when you're faced with a big problem like this, it can feel really overwhelming and that feeling of being out of control makes you want to dilate your focus into something that makes you feel like you have control. So you're like, okay, I'll just take this supplement or oh, okay, I'll just do this. And then you don't focus on the big problem at hand, which is you're in a toxic environment. So you have to really do the thing that's necessary. If you're in a toxic environment, you have to get out. You don't have to do it tomorrow, but you have to plan for it. You know, it's important. Things won't change if your environment doesn't change. When it comes to the gut bugs, you're mostly gonna be looking at doing this with, um, with a probiotic supplement. You could use antimicrobials, you could use antibiotics. Do not recommend that, don't mess around with that stuff. You'll probably just make things worse. Almost everybody that I talk to that does this 
or did this, myself included, made this way worse. So don't do that, not a good idea. I would go with taking a probiotic. Probiotics are antibiotic, they kill other organisms. If you have dysbiotic bacteria, it will rebalance them far more effectively than a parasite cleanse or taking antibiotics or something like that. So we're gonna talk about probiotics in this section down here. And step three, so we've got, so step three has got three parts basically. We've got heal the gut, support digestion, and restore the flora. And we're gonna talk about trauma a little bit here. Don't know if you can actually see that, but we've got trauma down here, it's just a note for me. So heal the gut, okay, well that's great. So we just heal the gut, boom, done, right? No, okay, so how do we do it? Heal the gut, so most important step is remove things you can't digest. If you're eating food, you're not digesting, it's damaging your gut, so stop doing that, temporarily. It's not forever, just do it temporarily. We've got to change your environment. So if you're in mold, get out. If you've got mercury in your teeth, get out. I use those two examples because they're really common. It could be anything, you know? It could be you could live next to a, a chemical engineering plant. You could live in the country where they spray, you, they, they spray pesticides over your house with, a, with an airplane, you know? I don't know what it is, but do some research. Figure out where you're being exposed to toxicity. Reduce it. This can be like brushing your teeth with fluoride in your toothpaste. This can be drinking tap water. There's a lot of different ways you can be exposed, exposed to toxicity, but you have to remove that toxicity. Otherwise, obviously, if you have poison in your body, your body wants to get it out and it's going to give you diarrhea. So we have to fix that first. And then we can start working on the, the gut bugs, but we're going to talk about that in the third step here. So heal gut, remove this, remove this. So get rid of those two things. Usually that alone is enough. You know, your body already knows how to fix itself. Cut your hand open, it will heal itself as long as you don't stand there and hold it open like this, right? The same thing is true with your gut. As long as you remove the things that are stopping it from healing, it will fix itself. But there are some things we can do to help this process. But these come afterwards. If you try to do these things before you've done the other things, it's not gonna work. So do those things first. I know they're harder. I know they're more challenging. I know they take more effort and more responsibility, but they're the most important things and they're the things that are gonna make you heal. So I want you to do those things because I want you to heal. But then once you do that, we can start looking at um, supplements and digestive aids and things like this. So, heal the gut. First of all, a GAPS diet can be really helpful for that. Doesn't have to be GAPS, but what I'm saying is eat food you can digest. That's what's really important. You'll know if you digest it because you don't have diarrhea. That, that's generally gonna help. So, what else can we do to heal the gut? So we've got some options over here. So broth, this is a big part of a GAPS diet, but broth can be really helpful because it's pre-digested. So even if you're still having diarrhea, all of the stuff that's in there is pre-digested, so you can just absorb, even if it's flooding through and it's coming back out as a liquid, your body's still drawing some nutrients in, in in the meantime. So that can be really helpful. Glutamine is an amazing supplement for people with diarrhea. So when you take glutamine, and the way that you'd wanna do this would be, so not medical, not medical advice, but I'm gonna tell you about the physiological effect of taking high doses of glutamine. So not telling you to do this, but I'm telling you this is what happens inside your body when you take five grams of glutamine. So if you take five grams of glutamine three times a day, so maybe like morning, mid, lunchtime, and, and, and at dinner time, when you consume it, it's absorbed in the stomach and it triggers absorption of, of water from the colon and the lower digestive system very rapidly. So if you're having diarrhea, there's a good likelihood your stool is really loose. And if you do this trick, you can trigger your gut to absorb more fluids from lower down in the digestive system, which can help to solidify the stool. So I'm not telling you to do that, but that might happen if that's something that you did. Broth is also really great for this because broth is one of the most naturally dense glutamine containing foods there is. So this is another reason this can be really helpful. Both of these also help to heal the gut lining. They're, they're, the, the glutamine itself is uh, one of the primary fuel sources for the, for the endothelial cells, so the cells that line your, your digestive system. And they also use them in re repair and rebuilding as well. So they give them a fuel source and they give them a building material. So both of those contain that really helpful. Probiotics is really, really important. So this is the restore flora component. Probiotics are really helpful because they orchestrate the repair of the digestive system. So think of them like builders inside your gut. If your gut is damaged, it doesn't just rebuild by itself. It uses the healthy flora to help it do that process. So if they're not present, the building still happens, but it doesn't happen very well. So instead of having like this tip top, high level building firm that's working for you, building like this five star hotel, they're building one of these like run down, like countryside, just like a man that has no qualifications, just 
just layering bricks together, you know? Sure, it's a building, right? Sure, it's gonna keep him dry, but it's, it's, it's nowhere near the same level of quality of building. This is what having the right probiotics in your gut does. It makes it so that your gut heals itself and seals itself to a higher level of construction. It's, it's needed, it's required for healthy gut function. So taking a probiotic can be really helpful with that. And then here we've got support digestion. So I, I would look at this through the lens of the five pillars. So the five pillars are the five primary core functions of the digestive system. So I'm saying this because supporting the digestion means you have to support your digestion with, with where it's struggling. So the five pillars are strong stomach acid, um, enough, like plentiful quantity of digestive enzymes, fluid, non-viscous bile, powerful coordinated motility, and an impenetrable mucosa. So these are five indistinguishable functions of the digestive system. If one of these fails, it doesn't matter how hard the other four work, it, it can never do its job. So these are the five core functions of the digestive system. So we have to make sure we figure out which one isn't working properly and support that. So if, for example, you have diarrhea and you see a lot of, like say you see a lot of undigested meat, so say you eat meat and then you go into the toilet and you see solid meat particles. Really good indicator that you have low stomach acid. So taking betaine HCL might be really helpful. I have had people, I know of people that have liquid diarrhea, they see solid chunks of meat in the stool, they take betaine HCL, diarrhea completely stops, completely formed stool. So in this case, the food that they couldn't digest was the protein because they didn't have strong enough stomach acid. Provide the stomach acid, the body digests the food, it doesn't have diarrhea anymore because it's not trying to get rid of food that it can't digest. But that only works if the problem is low stomach acid, you see. So if, one of, if the problem is somewhere else, say, so let's go down here, let's look at, let's combine the lipogold and the ox bile. So this is the digestive enzymes pillar supplement and the, the bile pillar supplement. So say, for example, your diarrhea, is really caustic, it burns when it's coming out, and you notice that you've got an oil film on the top, or you notice all of the stool floats in the toilet. This is a good indicator of fat malabsorption. So in this case, boosting your stomach acid, maybe it's gonna help, maybe not. What's definitely gonna help is improving your body's ability to break down, digest, and absorb fats. So if we take a digestive enzyme that contains lipase, which is the enzyme that you've used to break down, digest, and absorb fats, and ox bile, so we're basically providing an exogenous source of bile, we've basically, combined both of these supplements to complete that full digestive process for, for fat malabsorption. So now the fat, so you eat, you eat the fat and you have these two supplements in the meal, you digest the meal properly and your body doesn't, just doesn't give you diarrhea because it's actually digesting the food now. So it doesn't need to get rid of it because it can break it down, digest it and absorb it. But that's not gonna do anything for you if that's not where the problem is. So you really have to take a look and dig a little bit deeper and figure out what the root cause of the diarrhea actually is. That's something you need help with i offer a service called a root cause consultation that is designed to do exactly that because if someone would have offered me a root cause consultation when i was really ill it would have literally cut two years off my healing journey it would have saved me like two to three thousand pounds you know and the, the time is the most important part here because that was years of my life that i basically just wasted being sick because I wasn't focused on the root cause of the problem. So if you figure out what the root cause is, figure out where the five pillar dysfunction is, support it, the adaptive response goes away because it's not necessary anymore. So we'll continue with these. So here we've got, so this is for the, for the, for the motility. So motility is a really hard pillar to supplement for because in my experience, nothing really helps. Nothing really helps with motility. If your motility is going too fast, because there's too much liquid, the glutamine can be really helpful because it can encourage the absorption process in the, in the, in the colon. But if, you go to, if, you're, if you're constipated, there's, there's not really much, but if, if you're constipated, you probably clicked off this video a long time ago, so let's not worry about that. So when you're looking at the motility pillar, you have to think, and the thing that this always, this is, this is more true for me than ever. This is something that I didn't really realize when I created the five pillars, but that as I've gone through my own healing process and now I do it with others, I've really become aware that this fourth pillar of motility is almost universally directly connected to trauma. So if you think about the fight, flight, freeze response, if you go into fight or flight, your body wants to just 
evacuate the digestive system. So guess what? You get diarrhea. So if you're stuck in fight or flight all the time, you're probably going to have diarrhea all the time. And it doesn't matter what you eat. It doesn't matter because your body doesn't care. Your body doesn't care what you eat. It doesn't care whether you're eating some premium caviar. It doesn't care if you're eating the best organ fed liver or organ fed meats or it, it doesn't, it just doesn't care. You know, it's in fight or flight. It's just like, we're just trying to survive here. Like get this out. We need to run away. We need to fight. And then if you go a step further and you go into freeze, your digestive system just shuts off completely. All, all resources that are sent to the digestive system, they're just, they're just on pause. And this usually leads to the constipation side of things. So you usually get the fight or flight, which is the diarrhea, and then the freeze, which is like the constipation. And this is constipation, this is gastroparesis, this is um, poor, poorly coordinated motility. So maybe you've got a mix of both of those. Maybe you go back and forth between constipation and diarrhea. Maybe you've got diarrhea and you've got gastroparesis. You're probably stuck in between fight and flight and freeze and your body's just going back and forth between fight and flight and freeze. So you have to look at the trauma there. And this is, this is the final point that I have here. All digestive function can be affected by trauma. So as I said, when you're in fight or flight, your body just deprioritizes all of your digestive function. And if you go to freeze, it just basically shuts it off completely. So this affects all of the other five pillars. This affects stomach acid production. This affects enzyme production. This affects liver function, which, infect, which affects uh, bile production. This affects everything. So if you're in fight or flight or freeze, it, you're basically just gonna be stuck because your body isn't gonna prioritize anything in the digestive system at all, N none of it none of the gut repair, none of the nutrient uptake, none of the, like nothing, it, none of it's important because you're in fight, flight, freeze. You're in a place where your body's just trying to survive. So that's also something to look at. That's a, that's a, a different side of this, of this problem that you also have to consider because yes, we have all of this physical stuff and I think hopefully I've gone into enough detail of the physical stuff for you to understand. The physical stuff is really important, but if, that's not where the root of your problems is. So again, bringing up that root cause focus, if the root cause is not physical, if it's a, uh, a nervous system dysregulation, if you're stuck in fight, flight, freeze, not much of this physical stuff is gonna work because the, so the physical stuff is more masculine in nature. Your wound is not in the masculine. You don't need healing in the masculine. You need healing in the feminine. And this is where trauma is held. So it's more emotional. This is the fight, flight, freeze. So you have to look at it from that perspective. And in my case, and in many cases, it's both right? It's both. So the thing is, if it's both, you have to do both. Otherwise, you're not really going to see much improvement. But when you start doing, if it is both, when you start doing both, everything will change. Your whole life will change. All of the symptoms will change. Everything will start to make sense. And your symptoms will go away. And that's the, that's the point that I want to leave you with here. The thing that's most important to understand is whatever your symptoms are, whether it's diarrhea, whether it's any of the, the downstream consequences of having poor digestive function, so whether it's autoimmunity, low energy, nutritional deficiencies, insomnia, anxiety, panic disorders, whatever it is, you don't have to have it forever. You, you just don't. If you, if you think you're going to have it forever, then you probably will because you're not going to keep looking for the answers. But if you're determined to figure this out and if you know deep down, like, like I did and like I do, and like if you've watched this far, you, you also probably believe, your body knows how to heal itself and everything that's happening is adaptive. So change the environment, change the food, change the trauma response, change everything, and your, your health changes as a consequence. It's literally like you have an equation of one plus one, of course it equals two, but if you change one plus one to two plus two, it equals four. So if you change the environment, you change the variables at the beginning of the equation, what you get at the end is different. So if your health is where it is right now and, it's, and it equals something that you don't like, you have to start looking at the variables that are going into that equation and change them. And as you do, the equation will change and you can have health again. So I, wouldn't, I would not recommend that you suppress diarrhea as a symptom with medication. It's an intelligent response. Your body's trying to do something. I've heard countless stories of people that do suppress diarrhea using medication and then they end up developing autoimmunity, chronic gut infections. Just, I, I really don't think it's smart, you know? It just doesn't make sense. If you think about your body being smart, it's trying to do something, unless your, your life's really dependent on it. I, I generally, generally wouldn't suggest it and I, I wouldn't do it myself. But if it comes to that, it comes to that. But look at the root cause. Try to figure out why your body is expressing diarrhea. Try to figure out what it's trying to get out of your gut. So this can be inflammatory food. This can be environmental toxicity. This can be bugs that aren't helpful. This can be trauma, you know? If you're holding emotions, so this is, this is something that's really interesting about the trauma side of things. 
if, you, if you're going to work on, on that side, most of the trauma actually gets held in your gut, especially things like fear, anxiety, uh, boundary conflicts. Think about it, your, your gut lining is, is, your, is a boundary, right? So if you have boundary problems, you're going to have boundary problems. If, if you know you have traumatic, traumatic problems, if you know you have, if you've got a high adverse childhood event score, if, you, if you've been to therapy in the past, like you can somatize emotion. So this means you take emotion and make it manifest as physical symptoms. And it's absolutely possible that can happen. And it definitely did in my case. And if you're in a chronic, if you have a chronic health problem, it, there's probably some component of that too. So this is one of those variables at the, at the, in the equation. So you have to make sure that you're doing everything you can with all of those variables if you want the end result to change. So don't settle for less. You can heal everything. I totally believe it. You can heal all of your chronic problems. I've done it. I see people doing it. I believe in you. You can do it too. Just keep asking the question. Why is this intelligent? Why is this an intelligent response? Why is this the best adaptation to my current environment? And change the environment and the symptom will change. That's everything for me today. Oh, let me check if we have any questions. I don't think we do, but let's see. So if you're, just, if you're watching now and you haven't left any questions, now's your opportunity. No, we have no questions. So that's everything for me today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions to ask, uh, after this, as a, as, a, as a comment after the video, please, I'll be more than happy to answer. I answer every single question. So please leave me uh, your questions and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.